Sorry. 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 Was, the, was there an issue during the time of the Sahaba or the people of the past in which they didn't take knowledge from a specific individual because of a, a problem with him? Uh, if you look at the situation, there's a difference that must be made between taking knowledge from someone and accepting a truthful statement. They aren't the same. We mean taking knowledge, sitting with a person, learning from that person, accompanying that person, that shit, you should become a person of sunnah and a person of piety. Both, not just one of the two. A person of sunnah and aqidah and a person of piety, not a sinner. Not a person who accompanies sinners. Not a person who sits and laughs and eats with sinners. Well, even if he's upon the sunnah. Tayyib, both. Sunnah and piety, both. Well, that's the person you should take knowledge from. As for the issue of taking knowledge from one who isn't upon the sunnah, or has some mistakes in his aqidah, then you should stay away from it. But that's a long, detailed issue that we're not going to speak about right now. It's a long, detailed issue. Uh, it's a long, long, detailed discussion. Can you take knowledge from someone who isn't upon the sunnah? That's a different issue. Always inside the field, so on and so forth. al we say to you today, take knowledge from that person. What we meant, or what we're saying, is a statement of truth. Well, a statement of truth. The khawarij. There's several examples of this. They said to Ali radiallahu anhu, la hukma illa lillah. There is no ruling but Allah's ruling. What did Ali radiallahu anhu say? You hear the khawarij, the dogs of the fire. I heard the messenger of Allah says, tell me to kill you. La. He says, kalima tu haq. Urida bihan batin. He says, it's a statement of truth, but you have a false intention by it. Well then, so there's not, I don't know of an example in which the truth was ever rejected, no matter how deviant a person may be. If a person says a statement of truth, it's a statement of truth. So you ask for the individual, then that's a different issue. Well then, so I, I, in brief, in brief, this is a very important, this is very important, um, that we have to get out of this mindset of worship of personalities. And that worship of a personality goes so far that you become blind from the truth. You can't see what anyone else is saying, no matter how clear it may be. You refuse to see it. That could be a punishment from Allah. Could be a punishment from Allah. Allah said in the Quran, and we will turn their hearts. Afidatahum. We will turn their hearts. We will invert their hearts. We will flip their hearts. Wa abasarum and their their vision. Huh? Kamalam yuminu because they didn't believe in it from the very first time, and we leave them in their blindness to wander around. If a man, if a blind man walked out in the middle of the forest that night, what would he do? He would walk around, no matter if it was a tree in front of him. If it was an animal, he wouldn't know. What the other Allah? But if we Allah not give Allah no light, then what does He give Him? Allah said in the Quran, "The one whom Allah doesn't give any light, then there's no nur." If a blind man sat in front of a, a, he wouldn't know whether the light is green, red, or yellow. No matter how clear, but he can't see. Thus is the one whom Allah and may Allah protect us from this. When Allah seals his heart and puts a screen over his eyes, he can't see. He can't see. And then that's not enough to stop and stay in the blindness yourself, but to go and attack others and accuse others of not understanding, of not knowing, of, of not having the knowledge of the affairs. That's even more disease and even more sickness. It's not sufficient for you to have that in yourself, but to accuse others and put it and force it on others. You have to see it the way I see it. You have to take the statement. What do you mean? He said it. You can't take the statement. It's for man. What do you mean? Yeah, subhanAllah. The haq is accepted no matter who brings it. And this is from the principles, the principles of al-Islam, let alone the salah. Let alone the salah. The principles of being a Muslim. Accept the haq no matter who brings it. As for you being with that person, sitting with that person, that's a different issue. Well, then, well, then take the truth. If someone says to you, fear Allah, if a kafir says fear Allah, what do you want to do? You're a kafir, you're thinking kafir, you're going to hell. Fear Allah. Look at the story of the man, huh? 
Those three men who were in the cave from Bani Israel, Naam. The three men who were in the cave from Bani Israel, and the rock came down the boulder and it enclosed them up. They couldn't get out. And they said, Nothing will save you tonight except that you make dua to Allah to the best of your righteous actions. And we know what the first two men said. He had the two parents. Wadih. And he didn't give his children the milk before his parents. And then who had the man who worked for him? And then what did the third man? He said that I had a family member, a relative, a far cousin. She was beautiful. I loved her more than any man could love another woman. More than any man could love another woman. And I wanted to, 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 to be with her. She refused. She was pious. No, no, no. And what happened? There was a year of famine, a year of drought. She was in need. She asked me for money. I said I would give you the money, but you have to allow me to be with you. Tayyip. And when he approached her, as a man approaches a woman, huh? he was this close to getting what his heart wanted for so long. What did that woman say to him? She says, Ittaqillah. وَلَا تَفُضَّ الْخَاطِمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّهِ Fear Allah. He says, what do you mean fear Allah? You took the money. You laid down. La, he took the haq. Huh? He took the admonishment. And he stopped and he walked away. And there are countless, 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 countless examples. Except the haq. And it applies on both sides. Whether it's for you or against it. Truth. Take the truth. Huh? So this is very important. And I, I, I'm going to leave on this note. A benefit that I got from one of my teachers in Kuliyat al-Hadith. In the College of hadith It was the first year of school. The second semester. And we had the subject, uh, Fiqh al-Hadith. Huh? When we study the Fiqh, the jurisprudence of the narrations. And how to understand and act upon the different Hadith. So the professor that we had, the teacher that we had, he would present to us the issues. The ulama differ over this issue. This is their proof. This is their proof. They say this, they say this, they say that. The strongest opinion is this, based on this and this and this and that. And he said, he said to us, this teacher, he has studied with some of the students of Sheikh Sa'di, rahimahullah. He says that our Sheikh, or Sheikh Sa'di, or Sheikh Sa'di, the correct, correct pronunciation of it, his, what he would teach, how he would teach his students, he would present to them the issue first, the fiqh issue. What is the ruling on wiping over uh, shoes? He would start, the first opinion says it's permissible. The proof is this hadith, that hadith, this opinion, this qiyas, so on and so forth. The next group, they say this, they say that, and they say that. The third group says this, they say that. And then he will make the tarjih. The strongest view is this because of the delir. Then he will say, who said the statement? This was the statement of the Shafi'is. He says he wouldn't start off Shafi'i. Because when you hear that word, oh, Imam Shafi'i had this opinion. This was the opinion of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. That, that, that all is going to be in your heart once you hear it. Without looking at the opinion first. You see the point? Without looking at the dalil, awwalan, wadish, without a doubt. Yeah, hey, you get the point I'm trying to make? This is how he would teach us in the class, and that's how he was taught. He would present the argument first, present the dalil first, then mention the name of the opinion, or the name of the person who held that opinion. As for to say, this is the opinion of Shaykh al-Albani, may Allah be pleased with him, and reward him well in Islam. The first thing that's going to go in your heart is what? Shaykh al-Albani. Kalas. Sheikh Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, the ulama, Sheikh Ibn Baz, and hacker that, this is Sheikh Alain, Sheikh Alain, he said it, and he said it, and he said it, and he said it, so the thing, it takes you, instead of saying the proof, the dalil, boom, 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 then Sheikh Alain took that opinion. So this is very important, and then we have to get out of this mindset, we have to get out of this perverted mindset, and looking at the personality, and disregarding the statement. We have to get out of this mindset. It has been stuffed down your throat for, for many years. You have to get out of that mindset. That's, that's wrong. That's not correct. Allah.